What it do, Q Crew? Q back here again with another video for you. Today's video, I'm going to talk about why the Camaro doesn't sell so well. So, over the last few years, the Camaro sales have been declining. Then they took a nosedive, and then they're slowly declining again. So, I'm going to get into the reasons why the Camaro sales are down. Some people call it a failure. Other people just say it's just a recipe that was meant to happen due to design. Not the design of the car. Actually, I'm going to get into all that. So, before we hop into today's video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, browse the channel. Let's jump into it. Does your skin get dry in the winter, causing ashiness like the ash on Q's hands? No worries. Be like Q. Fix that ash with the hair and body butter from Drew. It's enriched with raw organic shea butter, mango butter, along with other natural plant-based oils. It deeply moisturizes dry skin and nourishes locks and natural hair. It can also be used as a beard butter. Take 15% off with discount code CHAOTIC. The link is in the description below. So the Camaro is a fast follower after the Mustang. The Mustang came out first, the Camaro came out a year or two later, and they sold for about the same amount of time, but the Camaro went away for 2003 to 2009. GM was like, uh, whatever. They, for whatever reason, they canceled the Camaro and the Mustang continued to sell. And the Mustang sold well, but the Camaro just went away and when it came back in 2010 it was a huge sales success and there was a few reasons behind that because there was marketing if you may have heard of a movie called transformers bumblebee was one of the stars of the movie it was a transforming car and it was a camaro a yellow camaro so that that gave the car brand recognition and then they started coming out with limited editions like hot wheel edition camaros which kind of take me back like I, I used to collect hot wheels when i was younger i'm like oh man now i can actually buy a car well at the time i couldn't couldn't afford one but it's like oh my god my childhood car is an actual car i can drive so i thought that was pretty cool and the sales were they were like 80 something thousand a year and they kind of stayed that way and they outsold the mustang from like 2010 to i want to say maybe 2014 maybe even 15 and then the new generation of the Mustang came out in 2015 and the Camaro came out in 2016 and this is when the table started to turn so I'm going to talk about the first reason why the Camaro is losing sales to the Mustang and the Challenger so people say it's great to make a great first impression you only get one first impression and if you're shopping for a Camaro it kind of shoots itself in the foot because I mentioned in the last video the Camaro was designed from the outside going in so it looks to me it looks phenomenal but that sacrifices visibility so um that is a lot of people's gripe with the Camaro is the visibility and to be honest the first time I drove a fifth gen Camaro so I was going to buy one of those until I test drove it I was about to get the best spec you could get a v6 automatic 2010 camaro and uh this thing that was sarcasm by the way so this car after the test drive i'm like well during the test drive i'm like it drives beautifully and uh at this time the mustang was still solid rear axle so the camaro had the uh, independent rear suspension drove wonderfully and then when i went to park the camaro in the parking space at the dealership I was like three feet away from the curb you cannot tell where the front of the car ends at I'm like man I don't like that so it was very hard to see out of so I ended up going to test drive a Mustang it was a V6 automatic Mustang which I ended up buying my first cool car so it was a what was that a 2012 V6 Mustang 
instantly it was the visibility that helped me choose that and that's where the Camaro shoots itself in the foot because I've owned a couple Camaro so I can see out of it but it does take some getting used to your if you're test driving that's not long enough to get used to the Camaro you can't really get acclimated to the lesser visibility that it has compared to a lot of other cars it is a true sports car of the Challenger and the Mustang and the visibility is that of a true sports car so the very first impression the visibility turns a lot of people off and it did to myself and with the sixth generation Camaro it got even worse so there was a uh, some of the auto publications I don't know if it was car and driver or not but they were talking to GM and they were talking about the poor visibility and GM was like uh, our current customer said there was no problem with the visibility and this is the problem because your current customers have the car you want to get new customers as well because you want to expand and sell more cars but if a lot of people don't like that they're going to go elsewhere and buy something else which is what I did I bought a Mustang so it was even worse it was more cramped on the inside than the fifth generation because it went from a bigger platform because the Camaro shared the platform with the Pontiac G8 and which was a full-size car and then the new Alpha chassis was kind of smaller it shares with the Cadillac ATS and CTS which are smaller cars so there's that so that's the first thing the visibility and the first impression so the number two reason that the Camaro sales has slowly declined over the years and this was a pivotal year so uh, that's the cost so the 6th gen Camaro and I'm just talking the SS form this thing started at $37,000 and back at that time you could get I think a Mustang GT premium for that price the Mustang started at 32 to 33,000 and the Camaro started at 37,000 which is a huge price difference because these cars historically started off as cars that were affordable fun cars to the masses at $37,000 that's a lot of money for a sports car that my dad probably had one when he was a teenager or 20 years old now people who are teenagers and 20 I couldn't afford one of these until I was like 30 something so the price has gotten away from what they originally were and I understand things like inflation but that got out of the reach of people and again when I was ready to buy another one I chose the Mustang over the Camaro again due to price so out the door I had a few options I had a base GT black appearance package active mode exhaust and uh it might have been it but it was thirty three thousand dollars out the door after taxes and everything so um and the camaro just the base ss thirty seven thousand dollars and after taxes it goes up but if you get discount it goes down but you get what i'm saying so the sticker price four thousand dollars more that can be a deal breaker for a lot of people it was for me but they have since corrected that they came out with the LT1 and that's essentially what the uh, the scat pack was the scat pack was a bargain SRT with the Challenger so the SRTs used to be the king of the hill with the in the Mopar realm so they came out with the scat packs it was a value SRT you didn't get all the same suspension from the SRTs but you got the engine which was the what you want is the engine basically like I will pay for the engine over the suspension but it helps more people obtain that and that was a huge sales success now they don't even have the SRT moniker for the the Mopars anymore actually they done away with SRT as a whole for the future but um the SRT isn't a trim anymore it's a SRT scat pack but there is no more RT scat pack SRT and Hellcat it's just RT Scat Pack Hellcat red eye and whatever after that so the number three reason that the Camaro sales suck these days it just simply got stale like I just mentioned in number two like how you had all these Scat Packs Hellcats red eyes and all that the Mustang has the the GT's the GT350 GT500 Mach 1 Bullet the Camaro is kinda like uh, SSZL1 
and then you do get the track package which is a 1LE but the Mustangs they have the track package on there like the GT350 the GT350R the Mach 1 has the track package the 500 has the track package so I really don't consider the 1LE as another model it's just a track package option which is all it is basically so it kind of got stale and they didn't do a lot like yeah they interchanged colors in between the years and they did introduce the LT1 but that's not what excites people about the Camaro they want to see the high-end stuff the new technologies new powertrains and the Camaro just didn't bring that and the ZL1's powertrain was carried over from the ZL6 Corvette so it was already there nothing new like the fifth gen they had the Z28 which was the 7 liter LS7 that should have been here like where is that but now that engine is out of production the previous the C7 Corvette had the uh what's that engine called the LT5 the supercharged whatever was in the ZR1 with the 755 horsepower or whatever that could have made it to the Camaro but it didn't so we just got Z01 you can get a automatic on the 1LE Z01s at some point but and that, and that can that does help sales cuz not a lot of people buy the manual it's it's a minority so that definitely helps but it's not enough to bring in new customers and uh, like I said they with the fifth gen they had transformers they were advertising that and they just kinda I guess there was another one and another transformers but I didn't even follow up after the second or third transformers probably the second transformer but um it just got stale like nobody's rapping about them you even hear if you hear rappers rap about scat packs that's not even the top dog of the car like you know it's a good car when they're rapping about scat packs like me personally I gotta rap about the a demon or something you're gonna rap about the top but if a rapper is rapping about scat packs that gives you huge notoriety and I don't think I've honestly ever heard a Camaro in a rap line as of recent a Mustang either but the Mustang sell more than the Camaro so that uh, the Mustang can do that so that's the number three reason why the Camaros suck at sales right about now so the number four reason the Camaro sells suck is because of his biggest competitor and you would think that would be the Mustang or even the Challenger which sells the most as of today it sold the most for 2021 it's not even that the biggest competitor for the Camaro or the biggest stunter to the Camaro's growth is the Corvette because the Corvette is the king of the Chevy hierarchy like that's the top dog the Camaro sits beneath that you can't have the Camaro doing more than the Corvette they never give the Camaro more power than the Corvette the Corvette just has the best stuff and the Camaro gets the stuff it trickles down to the Camaro it comes later like I said the uh, the previous the C6 Z06 the C fifth generation Camaro got that in the Z28 and then the last Z06 the Z01 got that powertrain the ZR1 powertrain didn't come to the Camaro maybe yet possible I'm hearing rumors about it I don't know if, if it comes out I'm gonna want that but the Corvette that is where GM is putting all his money his R&D his development is all going to the Corvette the Camaro is just like I said in the last one it's been stale but you know what's not stale the C8 Corvette is not stale dual clutch transmission it's got the new engine the LT I, I lose track of these engines so many of them the new Z06 that's about to come out flat plane crank highest horsepower for a naturally aspirated engine you know what's not getting that and I can guarantee it the Camaro is not getting that engine I hope I'm wrong but I seriously seriously doubt that and that would make for an amazing GT350 competitor but I wouldn't get my hopes up so the Corvette is getting everything and the Corvette is not done there's going to be a hybrid so the Z06 isn't even the top the ZR1 or the Zora whatever the top dog of the Corvette is going to get a hybrid powertrain so it's going to be even faster just the base C8 is already just performance it is amazing the, the Camaro is not getting any of that so it's kind of like all right we did all this we might trickle down the the C8 Stingrays powertrain to the SS Camaro but even that may or may not happen so 
that remains to be seen but it's uh the corvette you just can't do better than the corvette so for ford in their house the mustang can do whatever it wants they're able to put 760 horsepower into the gt500 because what else is there above yeah there's the ford gt but they're not in the same price range ford gt starts at 450,000. Mustang starts at 30,000. Let's just say a GT500, let's just say it starts at 100,000, which is like the lowest you can find it at, at a dealership right now, even though the MSRP is like 80,000 or less. I, I can't recall. But they're able to do whatever they want. Like they, they're they unleashed. They can do whatever. The uh, Challengers, they're, I don't know, Challenger, Charger, they both get the same things. The Viper isn't there in the Viper the Hellcat didn't fit in the Viper but the Viper fell victim to this as well once Fiat brought them the things that the engineers wanted to do on the Viper they couldn't because they're in the same in-house as Ferrari so they're like whoa you trying to do what with the Viper Ferrari's like yo calm that down and that's not anything publicized like if you say post a link I can't do it I just know engineers that work there and we talk certain things we talk about that I can't share with you all but that's one of the conversations that I was in on so yeah you can't certain cars don't get to do what they can do to their full potential the Cayman is a perfect example of that they just got the GT3's engine but they will not let the Cayman be better than the GT3 it's always a watered down version in the Cayman even though it's People say that's the better sports car between the 911 and the Cayman, but you just can't do better than the Top Dog, which is the 911 and Porsches around. So in-house competition kills the Camaro. So the fifth reason that the Camaro sales are doing poorly right now, and I had to do some searching on this because I thought the 2019 is where the sales tank, but it actually didn't. The Camaro started tanking from the 5th gen to the 6th gen and we're going to look at some sales numbers right now. So let me get that pulled up right here. Alright, let's look at the Camaro sales. Let's go all the way back to 2010. So uh, let me pull it up on the screen here. The US Camaro sales. 2010. I'm going to say from year to year the sales starting with 2010 going all the way up. So we got 81,000, 88,000, 84,000, 80,000, 86,000 in 2014. And the final year, see I don't know if this accounts for the new model because I know 2015 was the final year for the 5th gen, but those generally come out in 2014. So I don't know if it starts in like September and then goes to the first few years of the next year but it, it really doesn't matter all that much so let's see 77,000 and let's go let's just say the 2016 which would start selling in 2015 around here let's just go to 2016 so 2015 we dropped a little bit 2016 we dropped to 72 2017 we dropped to 67 2018 we dropped to 50 and this would be where the <laughs> the funny the funny front end of the Camaro came out on the SS's that I hate. Um, but that wasn't the reason for the sales drop off. They've been declining since before then. And then they dropped more for 2019. And the one that I got my first Camaro, the 2020, it did did even worse for that. It went from like 48 to 29 thousand. And the year 2021, it did. 21,000 so the sales have been declining but there's a few reasons to why these sales have declined so in 2019 there was a strike at GM it was the longest strike within the last 50 years and it lasted six weeks and GM lost like two billion dollars so and this was with the UAW workers they went on strike so they weren't building cars so that would explain why 2019 2020s are down and then you know what happened in march of 2020 20, blah, march of 2020 the current pandemic that we're still in that happened 
and sales slow down but that affects everybody not just the Camaro maybe the Camaro had a harder time getting these microchips I don't know but let's go look and see what the Mustang and Challenger also did within this time so looking at these I don't even know which year. What year did the hell got come out? 2016? No, 2017? I think 2016. Let's just start looking at uh, 2014 sales. Challenger 22,000. Mustang 82,000. Camaro 86,000. And that will be the last time the Camaro would be on top. So 2015, Mustang did 122,000, huge numbers. Challenger tripled to 66,000, and the Camaro 76 or 77,000. Going to 2016, the year that the new Camaro, the 6th gen, came out, the Mustang is still doing numbers, 105,000. Camaro's at 72,000. Challenger's close at 64. And then. The Mustang drops off. Not sure what happened in 2017. Well, the Mustang has been out, so people are less excited. 81,000. Challenger 64,000. Camaro 67,000. It is very close within 3,000 units. And then 2018, the Challenger passes the Camaro. So the Mustang 75, Challenger 66, Camaro 50,000. And the Camaro doesn't look like it ever came back from that. And actually got worse and the Challenger got better so the Challenger was kind of consistent the Mustang is going down a little bit here let's skip to 2020 this is the between the ugly refreshes of the Camaro so the Mustang 61,000 Challenger 52,000 Camaro 29,000 then 2021 so the first time the Challenger outsold the Mustang. Mustang did 52,000, Challenger 54,000, Camaro did 21,000, which is abysmal. So they all had their issues. I tried to order a Challenger, was that last year? I tried to order a Hellcat, but the dealership for some reason couldn't order one because I guess there was no supply. So they, I guess the books were closed at this dealership that I was at. I don't know. That didn't seem right but they're all going through the same things the mustang still competitive the camaro is like man are they even trying so uh so we got COVID happening a strike happened is there anything else that happened they did the refreshes but they're they're stale so the sales are just kind of stagnant there's nothing new if they came out with another trim, maybe they would bump up. But like I said in the first step, that initial impression, I think they just need a, a total redesign in which I'm hearing the Camaro is not going to be continued into another generation. I'm hearing a four-door sedan Camaro, which is... Don't do that. Bring the Impala back if you want a sedan, because that's not there anymore. Just do that. The Camaro is a coupe. Just kind of like they did with the Charger, which was okay at the time, because Dodge, I don't know but don't want to go off into a tangent so concluding this video the Camaro is a fine automobile and I don't think that its sales reflect how good the car is because people say like oh it's a sales flop and there's other cars out there that don't sell well the Chevy SS same house but that that's one of my favorite cars of all time like I love sedans especially if they come with the manual the Chevy SS wonderful car only sold 2,000 units a year. What else is a good car that doesn't sell? Mazda as a whole, they sell a lot of CX-5s, but low volume sellers. And uh, it's kind of like McDonald's, I guess. Like, yeah, they sell the most, but that doesn't mean they have the best burger. So Wendy's, I think, makes better burgers. I'm a vegan, I don't even eat burgers from either one of them, so what am I talking about? But you get what I'm saying. So. Is the Camaro a flop of a vehicle? No, I think it is the best handling. I like it a lot, to be honest. I, I love the Camaros. I, I get a slight edge to the Camaro over the Mustang, but that's, it just fits me better. Not to knock the Mustang, I don't want to ruffle anybody's feathers, but I, I, like, I personally prefer the Camaro more. Um, 
so it's no fault of the car itself it's just it's just what it is GM isn't really pushing the Camaro to sell more so I guess they they chalk it up as a loss like all right we'll just milk whatever we can sell for now until we just kill it off or they'll if they do a final edition I will be I need that but if they don't then I wouldn't be surprised because look at these numbers like these numbers don't lie at all they're, they're telling a lot I didn't know the numbers were that far off like it's huge they're selling like a third of what close to a third of what the Camaro and Challengers are selling or the Mustang and Cam wow, Mustangs and Challengers are selling so like I said it's no fault of the car that is what it is the Challengers are the Mopar is very very exciting I had one last year too so they're they're exciting cars and especially if you only have one car the Challenger is the way to go it's roomy fast I need to get my hands on the wide body because I haven't experienced those because that's what I was missing in my Hellcat it didn't handle but the wide bodies fixed that from what I'm hearing so I need to get my hands on one of those and the Mustang has always been there the Mustang is the OG the Mustang they've been improving year upon year the Mustang is the SUV now like what is that but I, I would drive one of those I actually looked into buying my wife the Mach-E before we got another Blazer but the leases on those were insane so that's the story on the Camaro I like it terrible first impression they kind of cost a lot they're stale the Corvette exists and GM went on strike and definitely didn't recover after that and then the the emergency refresh on the redesign which was, it was already doing bad so it's just a bad storm to be in but I like them they're nice cars go test drive one if you're ever so inclined I recommend them all day long like I have my kids in them it's my daily it was my daily driver for a year so there's that if you have small kids the backseat isn't big enough for bigger kids in which I need to get my family in my car they haven't even seen the Camaro yet but that's it for today's video let me know why you think the Camaro is a sales flop don't do any of the fanboy stuff please like oh because Chevy is crap like come on man come come with something intelligent some factual data or something something logical not just the fanboy crap or just trash talk like I understand there's two sides to it and I play on both teams for these cars like I, all three teams I like them all so just come with something good so let me know in the comments down below don't forget to like comment subscribe hit the bell follow the channel and I'll check you all out on the next video peace out